There he is! Hi. Hey. Hello. Hi. Congratulations on first place! Thank you. How does it feel? Yeah, I'm, t I'm so tired. You're tired? That's... It's absolutely I, I haven't played the boot off so much last last week. Yeah. So, oh, so even I forgot for some a compass for some decks, but well, I remembered something. <laughs> you managed to retain enough of it to be able to clutch through. Yeah, I guess so. So this is your second tournament win of this season, yeah? Yeah, I guess so. How's that feel? How's it feel to have two wins under your belt just as we head over to the diamond bracket? Oh, it's emotional roller coaster. Well, basically I had uh, like two wins, but but I also had like one or two like really bad placements. You know, it's 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 over and uh, we are so back. We are so back. Yes. Now we've got um, we've got a couple of questions to kind of pitch at you if you would like to discuss them. Yeah, sure. Oh dear. Oh dear. Do you have any Zeb? I'm looking through mine. And I kind of forgot to. I stopped writing questions. <laughs> yeah, I don't have as many because we didn't get to spectate Cookie's perspective, but um kind of i guess going into grands were you just try we were talking about you know maybe how you were approaching and like what your strategy was and um were you just trying to go for the ko like immediately or were you thinking of trying to feel lucky out like you know see how she plays and what maps she's good at and stuff hmm that's a good question but i guess well, I, I guess I just try to play aggressively and sometimes just uh, chaotic. Well, just just to well do some weird things and uh, maybe I will push from one side, maybe from another. Who knows? Well, do you think? Sometimes... Do you think maybe oh. you were a little more willing to experiment since you did have the safety net of the bracket reset if you didn't win that set? Well, I, I guess so. I guess like if if you talk about the game on Thunder Point, I guess they will more optimal place. But I still try to do some yeah. experimental stuff. In some way, it worked. Well, it worked enough because you took the win. So mm, yeah. Uh, you yeah. Along with that, you had a really close, like, match against Jovan in Winter Finals. I believe I made a couple of clips of some of the plays, but, like... Okay, so there was one... This is a more of a silly question, but there was a moment, I believe, where you both kind of put Tentatech together in a way where it just made a beautiful little, like, X grid of the four specials and a clash in the middle. Uh, yeah. What do you? How do you feel about getting like fancy little artistic clash moments, or like those little moments where you get to piece everything together? Like, is that something well, you really enjoy doing? Is that something you're like, no, I like to make things as messy as possible? How? What? What were your thoughts on like map building? Well, most things are really beautiful. Well, and uh, I, I. I don't think uh, I expected the, the, the same play and on this turn, but well, it, it it was a surprise, but it was a good one. Well, and basically there are two sides of it. Either it's beautiful or or everything is dead. Like, uh, full clash. N nothing left, only great plays. Yeah. And, uh, well, sometimes it, it's actually it can benefit you in some ways. Yeah. Not sure it's the case in that game, but sometimes, sometimes he yeah, ain't supported. Like on X marks and uh, clashes on the first two, mm -hmm. three, four 
Jones. Yeah, clashes on X marks can like very heavily determine how those games go. Uh, actually, on the note of that, some of the kind of stuff, especially like your games against the Yovan, it started out with him getting two really good wins and setting up a really strong lead against you. But you managed to pull things back with some incredible plays and really good catches. And I can imagine there was a little bit of luck in play too. But like, what when you're backed against the wall, what were you thinking in that situation? Did you change your strategy or approach at all? Were you considering things? Did you find something out in game three that you're like, nope, this is what I need to do from now on to win? Mm, I, I, I'm not sure. So basically... So I just try to play as, as I played before. Well, Fair enough. Well, but I was definitely outplayed in the first two games. Uh, and uh, I even didn't expect that uh, it could work on square. Uh, it, this opening was a surprise for me, and somehow it worked. Yeah. On that note, was there a particular game that you've against somebody that you felt you did especially well with? Was there one that you felt like kind of didn't pan out as well, and did you learn anything from that game? Hmm. I'm not sure, but well, uh, the last game uh, against Jordan on the pedal, well, I, I guess, uh, well, I tried to make uh, right decisions and I guess it worked. Uh, well, well, so I successfully defend my base and uh, get specials and uh, like secured an another way to, to my spawn. Well, I, this game was pretty good, in my opinion. Yeah. I did what, what I saw needed to do, and I'm satisfied. And last but not least for you, if you could give us a fun fact about your Splatoon OC. I was expecting this question again. Yay! <laughs> I forced you into this. Congratulations. <laughs> but I'm uh, almost running out of facts. God, that just means that you have to come up with more facts. You have to do, do some RP or some writing or think about your OCs a little bit more. Well, we, we discussed uh, about uh, Trislosher's Shrine before. But what about Super Champ's Shrine? Oh. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist. Super, super, Super Champs, they're beautiful, but they always pop. It's oh. a set end for them. But my OC still likes Super Champs because they are so happy. Even though they live not long enough. Now, now, I've got a question about this. So they've got a shrine for the Super Champs, and they've got a shrine no. for the... Oh, they don't. Which one? There's no shrine. Oh, okay. Which one do they like well, more out of those two, though? Uh, can you repeat? What was that? I, I just asked to repeat question. Uh, out of those two things, what's their favorite? Like, the Super Chumps and... What was the Slosher? Yeah. Well, Super Chumps is, like, a favorite special. Unfortunately, there is no Sloshers with Super Chumps. Yeah. L life is unfair. It is. Here's hoping the third kicks. Yes, maybe, maybe someday. Split <laughs> but I don't think so. Splatoon 3's final update after the Grand Fest. They're like, alright. Everything's done. We're content. Players are free to go at home as we get ready for Splat 4. Those of you remaining, uh, we are now opening it up. As long as you have the base weapon, you can buy the sub and you can buy the special and you can mix them up however you want. It's not for Trizukas. <laughs> <laughs> Every weapon can now have a Zuka. No! 
Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, if you could make a weapon based on that, what, what kind of loadout would you make? I imagine mm. Slosher and uh, Super Chump would be in there, but what would your sub be? Hmm. I guess... I guess a burst bomb. <laughs> it's it's always nice. Um, That's a good combo. We're not talking about the butcher. Yeah. Yeah, and basically burst bomb is good for combat. Yeah. No, I think that that sounds like a pretty well-rounded weapon. It would actually be pretty fun to run around, throw a burst bomb at someone at range, get close enough to destroy them with the the slosher, and then while you're wreaking havoc, you just super chumps everywhere. And you're just laughing maniacally as everybody is scrambling Yay. to keep up with you. Yay! But yeah, congratulations on first place and best of luck in the diamond bracket. Thank you. Congrats. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Bye. And coming up next, we've got a very very lucky individual who managed to secure a fantastic fantastic second place lucky hello congratulations on second place how does it feel thank you it feels great i came into the event not expecting to podium actually but it's nice to you know, prove myself wrong, I guess. Oh, I can imagine. Is this the farthest you've gotten in any bracket? Um, no. I've... I mean, I've gotten first in Baby Jelly Cup and an event long ago that's not PBS associated. Um, but second, I've gotten seconds before as well. But this is the furthest I've gone in a TBO. Hmm. Yeah, that's, pretty, that's really impressive. Good job. It's another one for the books for you. Yeah. Now, we've got a couple of questions that we can hit you with. So, first off, uh, you had a couple of games against N. Like, you played him round <laughs> one, he knocked you out, and then you managed to clutch him down and win on the rematch. Mm -hmm. Was there a change of strategy, approach, mentality that you had going into it? Was it a bit of like, I know how he plays now and I'm going to utilize, take, all right, turn that against him? Yeah, there was a little bit of that. Like, in both sets, we played Girder. And um, in the second one, I forget whether I won or not. It's, it's only been an hour. But uh, I was able to play better on the second go around than the first one, definitely. Yeah, that first one, I think if I remember correctly, one of the games was just like, it was maybe the first game. You got a, he had a bit of a rough hand and you got like one good catch or a decent catch mm -hmm. or kind of one push and he immediately surrendered like turn two. Yeah, that was Thunder Point and I got good cards and he didn't, so. It was pretty much over by then. How do you feel about resigning that early? Is that something you feel like... Do you think he... It was reasonable for him to do that? Do you think he might have been able to bring things back? Like, if you were in his position, would you have resigned? Or would you have tried to tough it out and see if you could bring things back? Usually, I'm a fan of... Uh, going until I'm, like, absolutely sure that I won't win. So I probably would have kept going at least for a little bit until like I had run out of space and I don't have the special points to catch up. Mm -hmm. Like at that point, you know you're done for and that's when I would surrender generally. But in the first two turns, I that's not enough time for me to surrender personally. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Oh. I got one. So, um, you picked Sticky Thicket a lot. What are what are your thoughts on that map? It seems like one you enjoy. 
I do like Sticky Thicket a lot, and there is a little bit of strategy behind it because it's in some other tournaments it's a band map because of how weird it is, and so it's not practiced on it mu as much. But I really enjoy the map, and as other people don't practice on it as much, it's both one fun for me, and two I have a I, I guess a slight advantage because I play on it more than most. Mm -hmm. It's hard to play well, but once you kind of figure out what you're doing with it, it's, oh, it is a really fun one where you do have a lot of good opportunities and ways to maneuver about. Like, you have a lot of, from the games we saw, like, you were really good at, like, working your way through the thicket and into the opponent's base. Often to the point where you literally just walled off their entire section with just a, a splat charger. Yeah. I was, um, for that, I was just trying to make sure Double couldn't play anything there. Uh, I could barely play anything there myself, but I figured as long as he couldn't, it would be a good thing for me. Yeah. Uh, so... If you could give the viewers, anybody who's like plays table turf and might struggle with that stage, if you could provide a little bit of like support to give them a bit of a, an idea on what they might need to do to improve their game there, what would you kind of tell them? What's some advice? Okay. So Sticky Thicket is a, a very unique map in the fact that not a lot of cards fit in most of the map. Like, in the thicket, there's only a select few cards that can be placed. So, my recommendation is to find cards that do fit in the thicket, and then build combos off of that. Because if you have cards in your deck that don't fit in the thicket, you can only place them in your uh, base, or the opponent's base if you get there. So they're not as um, flexible. So it's best to have, like, the majority of your deck as able to play in the thicket, rather than only, like, half or so. That's fair, that's fair. Yeah, lucky, lucky. So, what's, what's the nit- what, what inspired you to name yourself Lucky? What's the fun with that tag? Um, well, so at first... When I first started playing Splatoon 3, I was going by a nickname that I use in real life. Um, and I wanted to change that because I play, you know, it's an online game. I don't really want that to be connected to myself in real life. So I figured maybe I should change that. And I was trying to think of a new name and I, I landed on Lucky partially because I do one, I do consider myself lucky. And uh, if you'll remember, one of the first fun facts I ever shared, I like having, uh, imagining my character with a little four-leaf clover sticking out of their mouth. Right. That was part of it, too. I thought that was very cute, so I stuck with that. Yeah. Speaking of that... <laughs> <laughs> Give us coming. a fun fact about your Splatoon OC! All right, so fun fact about my Splatoon OC is that she used to be afraid of heights. Aww. But as she uh, started playing Anarchy Battles, uh, she learned to super jump. And doing that over and over again helped her get over her fear of heights. I can imagine. Exposure therapy. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I can imagine the first couple of times she jumps into the air and she sees below her and she immediately lets go of her form <laughs> and just starts flailing in the sky as she screams. Oh yeah. That's exactly how I'm picturing it. Alright, well... Congratulations on second place. It only continues no, going up from there. <laughs> True. We look forward to seeing you in future brackets. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah.
And last, but certainly not least, by far not least, that would be a crime to call him such, we have Yovin. Hello there. Uh, hello. You, you had a pretty solid run with a lot of strong opposition yet again, securing yourself a third place. Rather than asking how you feel, because I can imagine the ideas, what have you learned? What is something that's like bouncing around in your mind as a result of this, these tough battles? Um, yeah, so I look through my games. I lost turn two, like every, every single game I lost in this tournament, except the last one, uh, I lost turn two. Some of them were just unlucky, but a few of them, like Main Street against DBL, I just I could have played uh, Cuttlefish in a way where it blocks everything and still kind of pushes up. Instead, I didn't, and it got clashed with a uh, Elite, and I just lost turn two. Mm. And and then the last game against DBL, what was that? It was uh... Um, uh, it was Pedal. Yeah, so the turn two I played against him in Pedal was a Reef Slider. Uh, it was just bad because. Yeah, was... that was a rough play. I, to be fair, I did not have that many good options, but I could have, like, played a uh, Junior on the left, block that off, and it would actually be, like, an even position from that point. Mm. Because he played. So then, yeah, that was, and then uh, I lost with Wall, that's just my bad for the 2024. So yeah, and then against Lucky, I want to talk about that too. Uh, please do, please do. Just, so in the Girder match I lost, I just lost turn one because uh, I had no cards, just unlucky. Um, and then I lost on, what was that, uh, Sticky Thicket. I had a pretty awkward turn two where there was like no way for me to actually push into lucky space where I also had no cards to defend my base combo. It's a bit awkward, maybe I could have done something different, but kind of lucky. And then the final match was over the line. I, uh, for some reason, I thought lucky was playing uh, Dapples with Kosuna, but since it's over the line, it's like almost guaranteed that she has the ball point. So I could have like played the little yard to prevent the ball point spot, but I didn't do that, and I would have won if I did that. Mm. On that game, you were both kind of. It looked like you were both sort of waiting for the other to cross the line first. Were you waiting, or did you just not? have anything to special over with yeah i would also yeah i think i would have won if i had either brought price stringer or screen in the first half mm -hmm. of the game i just did not have any of those like all my cards in hand were combo cards mm. so it was basically just luck when you had to go with the pearl drone yeah yeah it felt like a lot of situations like lucky was also in a place where she didn't really draw many cards that allow her to push so she was kind of stuck base building too and then waiting for that one moment and then you made your play and she made hers i mean my deck was designed to uh defend against attacks like uh, even if she had played something really early it wouldn't really have done that much yeah uh, and I think I would have won if she didn't. That, that Steel Elite, that Rapid was uh, super, super good. Hard to win against that. Yeah, no, she got a really good positioning there. On the note of that, for Over the Line, what are what's your strategy in countering, like, Splatter Screen or responding to it is probably the better term because you can't really counter Splatter Screen on Over the Line. How do you deal yeah. with that? Like, ex knowing that that is entirely possible that, like, turn three, your opponent can just drop a splatter screen and break right into your base and 
It's so hard to defend against. Uh, you can play Yo, that works. And uh, you can also, like, uh, defend against, like, uh, make sure that you have your... You can have a line on the bottom half of your map where that screen just won't reach through that. Which I did have that, actually, by turn three, I think, or four. Mm. Uh, I would like to ask about, in Winner's Finals on Square Square, you did a really unique opening with Joe. You kind of played it really defensively. Um, it kind of looked like there was room for Gnarly Eddie, but you ultimately went with um, N Perry and Order Duelies. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, uh, I saw some JP players at uh, Noko, I think. Yeah, a deck build. Uh, where he had Yo on the uh, place like that. I didn't see. I didn't. I didn't have a deck. I was, but I made my own with that idea. Uh, so I have a few combos like uh, Gnarly Eddie, End Perry Order Duelist, uh, Mint, and uh, o Shielded Octo Trooper. So a, a lot of combos I have in that, and it's a. Uh, it's pretty hard to invade that space yeah no so, it's just a clean umbrella essentially yeah it's really good at defending your base combo yeah it seems like it sets up base combos a lot better than you might usually get on square squared yeah uh, speaking of base combos and strategies, this is a classic one where people still very much play Dynamo decks when it comes to X marks the Gardens, and you continue to demonstrate the strength of a checkerboard deck strategy style. Uh, and we definitely saw that, like, in one of those games, Octavio is just really strong in X marks the Garden. Are there other cards that you feel like are, like, very slept on that in maybe in other stages or if we can focus on x marks the garden since that was where you played are there other cards that you feel like are heavily slept on or cards that you're utilizing that really give you the edge against all these dynamo decks uh in x garden yeah. i don't know i think yeah it's not really octavio that's good it is uh Horoboros that's good uh, so that's that. I don't know. I th people play Gris, people play Horboros, people play Dynamo, and Fry and Shiver. I don't really think there's that many other good openers. Oh well, no. I more mean like the Octavia was a really good turn too, because it oh, was yeah. pointed out that you not only did you cover. A lot of the mid, but you sectioned off like a chunk of the map for yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a lot of turn two options. I don't know if there's anything that's super slept on. There's a lot of under undiscovered things too. Yeah. I so, saw something crazy once that was like Hor Horoboros opener into like Horoboros puts you it not only does it defend but it also like it has uh, that little space little square that uh, makes it so you can go a bit forward on turn 2 so mm -hmm. you can put like a shiver turn 2 that is horizontal but still uh, blocks off the entire side. Shiver or fry. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. With so I'm gonna say that that's you will almost always win the game if you play Horoboros and then a horizontal shiver or fry. Alright, uh, now I've got two more questions for you first one is regarding the diamond bracket that's coming in 
or coming up, you're pretty much a shoe in to get into that bracket by any stretch of the imagination. What are you doing to prepare for this? Are you aiming to win this bra the diamond bracket? You thinking you're just gonna try to get as far as you can? What are you doing to I give yourself the best odds possible? Definitely aiming to win. Uh, that's like my goal is always to win. Fair. It's a good and, goal. Uh, I think I'm gonna update a few of my decks, especially on. Pick it. Uh, girder. And those are probably my main decks uh, that I have to work on. Yeah. No, they're good decks, but yeah. Then it never hurts to want to try to clean things up and refine them a little bit more. And those ones definitely. What, what, what do you feel makes them the most in need of being fixed up. Yes, uh, quite a few, a few, very few openers, and uh, kind of crumbles if I don't get the base combos. Mm. I recall you had to open with Octobrush and then basically just got um the big swigs were you even really able to like fit anything after that because i imagine you just got your openers then yeah i think it i would i would i did have a combos in mind for that i probably would have won if uh, luck lucky didn't have uh, marina and then like throw mm. more into my base mm. it's kind of easy Last question, because we don't want to spoil your tricks and strategies for what you'll be bringing to the diamond bracket. So instead, I'll talk. I'll ask you a di completely different question. Uh, give us a fun fact about Splatoon, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, but this next fun fact is a se secret. Is there a secret? Yes. So I can't tell it. Well, I'm gonna... Well, secret. <laughs> well, now you have to RP with me so I can get that secret. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> uh, you have a different thing that you could share in exchange. Or maybe a hint as to the secret. Uh... Fish. Fish? Okay. Oh. Very interesting. Very interesting. Indeed. I'm, I'm very intrigued by this. But yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the interview. Congratulations on third place. And best of luck in the diamond bracket. Thanks. And with that... We can close things out for the 53rd Table Turf Battle Open. Thank you all so Big much Ray. for watching. Thank you, Zeb, for being a voice that says words alongside me. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for streaming. Thanks, thanks to Andre. Andre? Andra. What did he say his name is pronounced? Oh no, I've ruined it. I'm so sorry. Uh, huge thanks to you, though, for also commentating for the first time. I'll get better at saying your name, I swear. I promise. <laughs> Scout's honor. And, yeah. I do believe we've got a baby jelly cup coming up, but aside from that, stay tuned for in the coming weeks, because the diamond bracket is not too far away either, and there's a lot of top players there that are going to be fighting tooth and nail to claim that crown so it'll be a grand old time yeah thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next time ciao Later, everyone.